Um, so I want to introduce Adam Bolt. Um, Adam's uh, come along as a group expert. He's part, part of uh, many large groups. Uh, he's an expert in online photography. He's now uh, winning prizes and awards all over the world uh, with his GoPro photography. So um, please, a warm round of welcome for Adam Bolt, please. Thanks, Adam. Thanks Thank for coming along. Um, Adam, I'm going to hand over the hosting to you. Sure. And uh, you are the boss. There you go. Over to you. All right. Can everybody see that? Yep. It's not a full screen. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> Okay, so as George said, I'm Adam Bolt, so welcome to tonight. Uh, this is a four-part series I've put together for Gold Coast Dive and Snorkel. Myself, I'm, I'm very new to scuba diving and snorkeling. Um, I've only just taken up um, scuba diving January last year. I've only done, I've done less than 20 dives, but my time through photography has really helped me to you know, really basically come out with a GoPro and, and start taking really good um, photos and, and videos with it because um, I've, I've sort of learnt the technical side of photography, framing and all that sort of thing. And that's what we'll go through in this in these four, um, um, I guess, online tutorials that, that we'll be um, showing over the next four weeks. So tonight it's all about myself. So it, it may not be for everybody, but um, what I'm hopefully showing you in, in tonight is that you can take you know, images with a very expensive two and a half thousand, three thousand dollar camera, but the little GoPro itself can create some incredible shots just once you know how to use it and what you can do with it. So like I said, tonight's all about myself. Next week we'll go through the settings that I use and some of the equipment that you can use. Uh, the week after that we'll do more about the, the lighting, framing and photography and video techniques. And the last week, uh, which I know a lot of people always ask about, is colour correction and editing. So I'll be talking about the GoPro Quick App and also another program called CapCut, which is the video editor that I recommend for people because it's free for one thing and it pretty much does 95% of whatever you'll ever want to do. Um, and I can use my 5.3K 60 frame per second video on an old computer and still edit it. So. Um, that's something I'm really excited to show people because once you see how easy it is to do the editing, your photos and your videos will go to the next level. So about me, I, I literally fell into photography. I was playing indoor cricket, it was two days before Christmas. Um, and next thing, I've torn my Achilles tendon, a ball come flying back to me and I went down to pick it up and I snapped my Achilles. It felt like somebody whacked me over the back of the leg. Um, it was uh, quite painful. Um, so there I am. I've got a trip that I'm going down to Tasmania just in that next week, and I'm I'm in a cast. I can't do anything. I'm going. What can I do? So I had an old Olympus OM10 camera. It's an old film camera. It was manual everything. So manual shutter, manual aperture. I had to set the film speed on it um, and and manually focus. So the beauty about a camera like that is it taught me the basics about photography, and uh, and, and it made me slow down and take the time to really think about the shot that I was doing because nowadays people get their digital cameras and they just go click, 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 click because they know they can take it. So what I'm going to show you tonight is just slow down, take the time to enjoy what you're seeing, um, watch it and then see what looks good. T start taking photos of what looks good to you. So this, uh, this first photo here, this is Horseshoe Falls in Tasmania. This is one of my very first photos I took with an SLR camera. Um, I was blown away. I thought, wow, this is, this is what you can do with a camera. And, and from that very moment, I was hooked. And a couple of years later, I went back to Tasmania. And um, this is another waterfall. This is called Liffey Waterfalls. And I, I put this photo in here specifically because as a photographer, I wanted to sort of take my photography to another level. On the left of this photo here, there's a viewing platform. Everybody's taking their photo from that position. I 
stupidly enough, took my shoes and socks off and walked through the freezing cold water to get right into the centre of the frame of the waterfall here. So this is a very unique shot of this waterfall, Liffey Waterfalls. And that's what we can do with our GoPros as well. If we... I think somebody's got their um yeah Adam just um just, there's a mute all button you might have to hit that one it's uh per Parazo got a mic <laughs> Yeah, it's coming across the microphone there. Is that fair? Can we turn the microphone? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm just going to take over control. Um, sure. Adam. So, Hang on, I'll get you and prove that for you. There you go. Sort this out. <coughs> Where are we? Oh, I'll give it back to you, mate. Okay. Uh, can you still see that screen? Yep. Oh, perfect. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so like I was saying that with our photos or, or videos with our GoPros, what what I you know what I'm gonna try and teach you is look for something different with your shots. Don't go take the same shot as everybody else. Look for a way to create something different to everybody else because that will really make your photos and your videos stand out to everybody else. Yeah. So just eight, eight months after I picked up a camera I decided to um, enter the Gold Coast show and um, yeah I ended up winning a first, a second, a third and I highly commended the first show I'd ever um, put photos into, hadn't joined a photography club, hadn't done any online training, I was self-taught, so I was absolutely blown away that I, would, you know, I came back with so many awards and I entered again the year after that and the year after that and um, I won plenty more awards. Uh, from, from there I decided that, um, well, let's, if I can win at a local level, can I win at a national level? So I entered um, the camera magazine, which was the biggest camera magazine back in 2006. Uh, and I ended up winning the photo of the year, which is that photo of the Q1 there. Um, and just to give you an idea of that photo, that was taken on a Canon 300D. That was a basic camera and a basic kit lens. So you don't need the best camera in the world. You just need to know how to frame your shot and how to control it to get, the, you know, to get an excellent image. And just recently, the shot on the uh, right there is a shot that I entered into Ted's camera house and that one a uh, $1,500 camera for me, which I ended up selling and buying two more GoPros because <laughs> I love my GoPros. We're not seeing the slides. We're not seeing the slides. So you can't see the slide? No. Let me try that again. Okay, can you see that now? Yep, I can see. Can anybody not see the slides? No? Okay, keep going. Yep. Um, and I, was, I found that um, I was enjoying photography so much that I would just have the camera with me everywhere. It's a bit like a lot of you guys where you carry your snorkel gear in the back of your car just because you don't know whenever there's going to be an epic day in the water and you, if you've got the gear with you, you know, you can actually, you know, like I've said, put here, you, you know, you'll never miss the shot if you've got it um, with you on the, you know, got the camera with you all the time. Uh, you know, so here I was coming home and had the camera in the car and I was able to capture uh, this epic storm. That's amazing. And now I carry the GoPro in my car all the time. Um, and basically I found it was the perfect tool for shooting storms and I love I love shooting storms because it's just one of my things my, one of my passions but it being a waterproof camera uh, the fact that I could sit it outside the car um, and I could do great time lapses with it and this is sort of the shots you can get with it um, when I do storm photography or also use a filter on the front just to cut back the light because 
the lighting so, the lightning so bright it can overexpose a shot. So I put a filter on the front just to cut back the lighting, um, and that way I can capture these shots. And there's another one when I was just out at Toowoomba recently, just um, just got out and had the camera with me and could take a shot like that. And one thing I quickly discovered was that um, you know lighting was the key to taking beautiful photos. So sunsets and sunrises were my favorite time to shoot because it just had these amazing colors and this amazing light. And this is a shot of um, Fiji at Denaru Island. And what I found out is you could do similar shots with your GoPro. This is taken with the GoPro down at the um, spit there on the Gold Coast. And um, the use of um, I found that the use of very bold colours, like your primary colours, like your reds, your blues, and your um, yellow oranges, it really makes your photo stand out. So this photo here, I submitted to uh, Higgins Storm Chasing, which is probably the biggest weather um, group on, on Facebook. I think they've got a million users. This got, oh, I think it was 100,000 views, over 1,000 shares and stuff like that. It was taken... I think about a week after the big Tonga volcano explosion. So you had all this ash in the air and I took this shot about half an hour to an hour before sunrise. And the sun, as the sun was coming up, it picked up all these colors. And you think, well, that's okay. You've taken it with a nice big DSLR camera, but this was taken the same morning with the GoPro. So you can see you don't need that big expensive camera. If you've got the right light, you can capture shots like that as well. And um, we can also use other techniques like this shot here on the sunrise. Uh, we've, this is called backlighting. So here I've got the sun right behind the, um, the sand pumping jetty. And what you do is you get this beautiful light that spills around the subject. So here you've got the lovely misty um, sun rays coming through the mist on the water. And you get this nice silhouette effect. You've got, you know, you can see the people, the birds, all that sort of thing. And it creates a really strong silhouette effect for you. And, you know, we can use that same technique when we're underwater. I just, you know, I sort of, when I started diving, I'm going, oh, wow, I love the way that the, um, the water um, for a sunrise, the, sorry, the, the sun, it breaks through the top of the water and you get this lovely light pattern. So you can use it to take photos and you can use that lovely backlighting from the sun. Or, um, yeah, so you can use that lovely backlighting you know, from the sun underwater as well. And you get that, as I said, you get that beautiful sort of lovely movement in the, in the light pattern there. Uh, as I said, the, the use of bright colours, especially primary colours like reds, yellows and blues, they really make your images stand out. Um, and if we use them for underwater photography as well, you can see the primary colours there. You've got your yellows, your reds and your blues, and it really makes those underwater shots pop for you as well. And there's another case of using primary colours, the blues, the reds, the yellows. And the reason why I've got the image here of the Twin Towers in KL, if you look at the very bottom, you'll see there's people there in the shot. And the reason why I put people in the shot there is it gives us a very strong visual representative of, of how big that, um, that building is. Without the people in there, you can just say, yeah, it's a normal building. But putting people in the shot, it really gives us a much better idea of the size of that building. And just recently we went out to Cook Island and if you haven't done Cook Island, go and do it. Oh my goodness, the turtles there were the biggest turtles I've ever seen. Um, so what I wanted to do with this shot with the GoPro is I wanted to represent the size of this turtle. Uh, and luckily enough, I had Kirsty. Um, she was diving behind the turtle and I got her in the frame. And you can see like the size of the turtle head compared to the Kirsty. You can now see how big that turtle is. So. Yeah, think about that when you're taking your shots of getting something to visualise the size of it. So you see a shark coming along, if you can get something else in the shot like a person, you're like, hey, George, come get the shot. Don't get eaten, but just get in the shot. Uh, it's going to really make the photos um, work so much better for you. And this is where I cried last night to George. <laughs> um, we, as a, as a diver, we are one of the lucky people because we're not behind 
uh, metal bars at a zoo or anything like that. We're in the water with the marine life. We're actually sharing their space. And these are some shots that um, are really special to me because I, I got to go to Borneo. And um, as I said, it gets, whew, it gets me every time I go and see this because a family of orangutans walked past me as I'm going through the forest. It was just the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. And there I go again, crying. Uh, it, it stays with us. And that's what we get to do when, we, um, when we're in the water with uh, the marine life. It's just something you can't explain to people. You get so emotional. It's, such, it's, it's, it's a real emotional attachment that you get when you're in the, in the water. So one of the, the most incredible things about when we do those close encounters with either um, animals or marine life is we get to experience it. And if we can add, like I said, we can add a human uh, element to the shot or capture a unique expression like I have here on Lucky the Elephant in Phuket, uh, it really helps to elevate that shot to another level for you. And um, as like just, I guess, going back over what we've sort of gone there, so lighting, expressions, framing, colors, uh, it all plays a huge role on the impact of the photos and videos that we take. So as I said, take the time to study the subject to create the best image, image possible. So look, look at it and going, hey, how can I shoot that to make it really look great? So here, the old lady on the side there, I, I studied her for probably 15 minutes. Um, this is on one of the waterways in Bangkok and she was paddling up and down on her boat, um, selling her wares. And you know, you think it, I mean, she's probably 70 or 80 years old, but you can see that she still loved spending the time talking to the people. So I really want to capture that in the shot. So I've got this lovely expression on her face as she's talking to somebody with some beautiful light on her face. Uh, and then we've got the shot here of the, um, the statue there in um, Thailand as well. And it could have been a really sort of plain, boring image, but what I've done to the shot is I've tilted it and made it angle away as well. So now you get these lines that lead through the, the, the frame. Plus then we've got the, the primary colors there. So it just helps to make the photo just stand out that little bit more by just adding little elements to it that make it more visually pleasing. So with all these skills that I was developing as a photographer, um, I was starting to get noticed with my work and getting paid to do something I really love to do. So I was doing commercial work, I was shooting sports photography, shooting wildlife, doing my own fine art stuff and shooting storms as well. And one thing that I wasn't good at was portrait photography. So I spent a lot of time studying that, working out how to use off camera flash and balance that with natural light. And I got really good at it to the point where models and couples wanted me to take their photos. And next minute I'm taking their wedding photos because they love their, you know, the couples, they love their, their portraits that I'd taken. So next thing I'm taking their wedding photos and I'm getting pretty good at this as well. So I love the shot here on the left. We've got the bride, the beautiful smile on her face and the way that the groom's looking at her. And as I said, I got into the technical side of photography. So this is some shots where a lot of photographers couldn't recreate. So this is using off camera flash and balancing that with natural light, which we'll talk sort of later about in the last section when we go into or the third section when we talk about lighting and composition and that sort of thing. Ugh. But with wedding photography, it killed the passion for me. There was nothing worse than taking wedding photos. I wasn't shooting for myself anymore. I was shooting for other people. And I, like I said, I just really lost the passion. <laughs> but I was lucky enough that, um, yeah, I won a GoPro seven silver and a drone for um from amazon's giftmas a couple of years back um which was perfect because it came in just before i went to the maldives so then i had this uh this new gopro and this is where my gopro journey begins and i got my passion back because i i'd stopped doing snorkeling diving i had a mate um that used to who came from south africa i was doing a bit of diving with and he went back to south africa uh, and I didn't have anybody to dive with. Now I do. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, this is where I got my passion back. I finally had a device that was so compact, 
but it was so capable as well. And I could take it places I could never dream of before, like this shot here where we were diving with a school of um, nurse sharks and giant traveller over in the Maldives. Um, and wow, I was taking photos that, like I said, I, I never thought I'd be able to take before. Now, this video, I wanted to put this in, it's not by myself, it's by one of the tour guides there, but I wanted to show it to you just to, so you can sort of see the things that you can do with your GoPro. Now we've already mentioned that sort of silhouette shot with the sun behind you. So this is what the, the this dive has done. So he's used the sun, even though it's midday, he's shooting back towards the sun. We've got that lovely silhouette shot of the shark so we can see them as a clear figure. You can also see the giant traveller. You can also see people on the bottom there. Now watch as he comes up. He comes up looking towards the sharks and then he sees a subject and he slowly pans towards that subject and locks onto the subject. So it's a great example of what we can do when we're doing the video side of the with GoPro because it just looks so incredible. So like, like I said, that's just, I, that was, that's the stuff that got me like, I have got to get into this. I have got to get good. I want to get that good. So um, I was using my GoPro for everything. I wanted to see what I could do with it. So yeah, I could see that I could use it now for photography and for videography. So it opened up a whole new world for me. I finally had something that was ultra portable for travel. I, you know, I didn't have to carry around a big DSLR camera with kit lenses and all the other stuff that going with it. Now I had something I just put in the palm of my hand. Um, and I can now share my, you know, my passion of adventure and the love of the outdoors and, and, and the water. And best of all, the image quality was incredible. So this shot here, you wouldn't think that it's been taken by a GoPro, but it has. Um, so what I've done here, a lot of the GoPros have the ability to take the, the front filter off. And what I've done is I put on uh, what they call a ND64, so a neutral density 64 polarizing filter. The polarizing part of that filter cuts back the light. So it means that um, rather than the light reflecting off the rocks there now, I can now see through the water onto the rocks. So we get that lovely glistening effect on the, effect on the rocks. And the ND64 cuts back light by six stops. So rather than my GoPro taking an image at one two hundredth of a second, it now takes a shot at one second. So you get that lovely blurred water. So you can take a very similar shot to a DSLR by just using filters and that sort of thing with your GoPro. So there's so much you can do with the GoPro that you may not be aware of. And here's some more, um, some more examples. So beautiful sunsets, GoPros create incredible colors. So as you can see those uh, lovely sunset shots and and just the use of framing again to like here for the spit with the sun coming up right in the center and then you've got the uh, surface heading out to the end of the spit there another shot down the bottom of the left there with the waterfall with the blurred water gopros are the best selfie cameras in the world where else can you take a shot like that and the shot bottom right is with the max lens mod for the gopro so if you're not aware of what the max lens mod is it's a lens you can put on the front of your gopro it will lock the horizon and as that uh, as the GoPro rotates around, it will keep that horizon straight. So my boss was uh, learning to fly and I said, hey, can I put my GoPro in the uh, in the plane, which he did. And I've got this great shot as he's banking the plane, but it's kept the horizon level. So like I said, there's so much we can do with our GoPro and it's just a matter of knowing what's um, what's capable. And um, because the image quality with the GoPro, it's so incredible. And the fact that it's waterproof, it's just perfect for all your uh, water sports adventures. So I do a lot of kayaking and um, you know, the, the GoPro can be mounted anywhere um, for unique perspectives. Um, so like here, I've mounted it on the back of the, go of the kayak with a selfie stick and it really makes an immersive shot for you. So like I said, what a great way. If you're traveling and you're going out on any water adventure like a kayaking or a river rafting or something like that, 
you can take shots like this and then you can engage your family and your friends or you know if you're putting it to social media it's the sort of stuff that people love to see they want to get invested in in what you're seeing um, so i really enjoyed playing with the gopro and um, seeing what it was capable of producing so i'd experiment playing with the settings trying different filters um, to see what would create the best results out of this little pocket rocket so um, this image here was taken at One Tree Hill up in Mullaney. I used a ND1000 filter which cut back 10 stops of light. So it blurred everything but the tree in the background. So we got this nice sort of um, artistic effect, I guess. And because I was taking shots like this, I started getting uh, featured by and noticed by GoPro. So this is one shot that um, GoPro recently uh, published to their Instagram that was taken by myself. So once again, a use of filters to get that lovely blurred water. And this one is um, with the new GoPro 11. They've got quite a new couple of new features in the time-lapse section. So this one is the light painting section. really need to get better at the, the light painting but um, just to go back to this uh, last video the one thing I did to, the, to to create this video that a lot of other people don't do when they do light painting is I made sure I shot this just before sunrise so not only did I get the nice light painting but I also picked up the colors of the of the sunrise in the morning so and I'll, I'll mention this over and over again so really think about your shot before you take it so how can I make this the best shot? What can I do to it to take it to another level? And uh, this is another one that GoPro just recently published. This was using the um, Star Trail section on the GoPro 11. So shots like that don't just happen. That took me a lot of planning. I spent quite a bit of time on Google Maps looking for a section of um, area that I could shoot due south so I could get that lovely star trail spinning around one point. Um, I also used uh, an app to see when it was going to be a new moon. I didn't want any light from a moon affecting the sky. And I also knew that the Milky Way was traveling through my shot when I was facing in this direction. So um, yeah, I was able to capture so much star trail doing that shot and this this shot i'm particularly proud of um, it's not every day you actually get gopro themselves comment on a something that you've posted saying you know what a sick capture you know, submit it for, for to the awards program and this was using the vehicle light setting on the new gopro 11 um, it's my favorite GoPro by a long shot. I've, I've had everything from a GoPro 7 Silver all the way up now to the GoPro 11. And this is by far the best GoPro. So if you're ever looking for an upgrade, you, you won't go wrong with this one. So a lot of people, when they did the light, um, light trail settings, they would take images of, I guess, you know, light trails or cars, trucks, all that sort of thing. But I wanted something a little bit different. I spent the time again using an app to see where the moon would go through the shot. Uh, I knew the Brisbane River, we had the ferry, so I knew they would move through the shot as well. Uh, and this was the result.
took me from about 6 p.m. to about 3 p.m. in the morning to take that, but um, well worth it. So as I said, once again, planning to get shots like that and you can create something really, really unique and different. Uh, and as George mentioned before, this is probably the most humbling thing that happened to me with my GoPro journey is that this, uh, this group on Facebook called GoPro Hero 11, they change the name every year. So uh, when the GoPro 12 comes out, they'll change that to GoPro Hero 12. Uh, it's got over 100,000 members on there now. I've only found one other user group that's bigger, uh, but this is by far the most active group um, on social media. And I'm one of seven people that have been um, nominated as a group expert. So like I said, it, it's, it's a really humbling experience to be part of that. Um, you've got people, you'll see there, Abe Kislevitz with the blue tick. He is the senior creative director at GoPro. You don't get any higher than that. He's the one that does the final edits to the GoPro Million Dollar Challenge. Uh, then you've got Daniel Rognes there at the bottom as well. He's an ex-senior engineer at GoPro. Uh, he's taught me a lot about how the GoPro works when I'm not sure. Um, so if, yeah, if there's nothing that, um, if, there's, if Daniel doesn't know the answer, nobody's going to know the answer. And um, he's been able to pass on a lot of, a lot of that information for me. And uh, yeah, so there's Abe Kids for this promoting the, uh, the Million Dollar Challenge. And this is what I really hope we can do with this, um, this tutorials that we'll be going through, that when the new GoPro 12 comes out, if you guys do buy that camera, is that you can enter and submit your own stuff to this stuff as well because man if your stuff gets selected and there was a lot of australians this year that got selected you'll come home with nearly twenty thousand us dollars so nothing to be sneezed at so hopefully this can get you to that sort of level so that's great adam we've seen a lot of photos and all that sort of thing but how does that help you well um Next week, we'll go over the GoPro settings and equipment. Um, I also talk a lot about how to avoid issues because the last thing I want to see you do is go on an expensive trip and next thing you've got issues with your GoPro and you don't know what to do and you've missed shots, you've lost photos. That's the worst thing. Don't want that, don't want that to happen to you. Uh, the week after that, we'll talk about... Um, on the GoPros, you can set different lenses. So on the new GoPro 11, you can do hyper view, super view, wide, linear, and narrow. So each of those different lenses will create a different look for your, uh, for your photos or your videos. We'll also look at the filters, how, you, how they can change your photos, uh, color filters as well for underwater uh, photography, macro lenses that you can also use for underwater and how to, and how to use them. Uh, the week after that, we'll talk about lighting and how to control your lighting and uh, why that's the most important part of your photography and videos. And then we'll look at the techniques like such as the rule of thirds, negative space um, and ways to frame the shot to create really visually pleasing imagery. And uh, there'll also be part in there about uh, cinematic underwater um, videography. So won't be just about photography, we'll be able to look at techniques of you know, how to pan smoothly and what, you know, how to use the, uh, the your GoPro to get really nice video from it as well. And the uh, last part, the week four, we'll talk about basic color correction. Um, and you know, it's pretty easy to achieve. There's apps like Dive Plus or in the GoPro Quick App, uh, you have a filter called water and if you click on that, you'll see it has dive, snorkel, surf, and you can use those filters to get back the, the natural colors. And as I said, we'll also talk about CapCut, which is the video editor that I recommend for yourself. And uh, lastly, so that's pretty much about it. Um, I'm really interested to hear from you guys. What, uh, what are some of the issues you're having with your GoPro? I guess, what are you hoping to learn from the presentations? Maybe there's things I'm not thinking of that I can put into the presentations to help you. If you have any questions tonight, uh, and like I said, I'm no expert when it comes to scuba or free diving, but I know a lot about the GoPro. So never be afraid to ask me a question and I'll help you wherever I can, uh, and whether it's to solve an issue. And if I can't solve it, I'll hopefully be able to give you a way to avoid that issue happening and again. Um, yeah, and as I said, answer any questions you might have. And uh, once we put all that together, all those techniques, this is something that you can, can uh, create. This is... Um, taken when I went to Bali last year 
It's uh, a snorkel that I put, but um, like I said, I'm very new to snorkeling and scuba diving. So to create something like this from, I think this is my fourth or fifth um, snorkel, um, you'll see that you know, it's worthwhile putting the effort in to learn your GoPro. Welcome to the Blue Lagoon, located on the east coast of Bali, Indonesia, a hidden paradise beneath the surface of the crystal clear waters. As we dive in and begin our snorkeling adventure, we are greeted by a vibrant array of marine life and colorful coral reefs. First, we come across a variety of coral reef fish, swimming gracefully among the coral. Their bright hues of red, pink, and purple stand out against the backdrop of the coral, creating a mesmerizing display of color. We can see different types of fish like angelfish, parrotfish, and butterflyfish, each with their unique patterns and colors. Continuing our journey, we come across a beautiful sea turtle swimming gracefully through the water. These ancient creatures have been swimming the seas for more than 100 million years, and it is a truly humbling experience to witness one in its natural habitat. Scuba divers can also be seen exploring the depths of the lagoon, marveling at the beauty of the underwater world. As we come to the end of our snorkeling adventure, we are reminded of the importance of preserving these precious underwater worlds for future generations to enjoy. The Blue Lagoon in Bali is a true gem and a must-see destination for anyone interested in the natural beauty of our planet. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. Hopefully you learned a little bit from that tonight. And um, yeah, next week we'll learn even more. Thanks, Adam. That's great work. Um, Adam, can you just give me back the host thing, please? And I'll just wrap this all up. Now, how do I do that? And I'll keep talking whilst you do that. Now, listen, um, everybody, just to wrap up, that was really good. Um, what I need you to do is questions on notice. If you go to our Facebook page, there is a chat section for the GoPro session. Any questions that you've got on notice, things that you want to know about, can you type them in there, please? And then Adam and I will uh, make sure we try and get through them in the next uh, three weeks. There's a lot of things that we want to share with you. I see a lot of people, um, in particular snorkelers who have bought GoPros and you're diving with them Without a housing, yep, I know they say 10 metres. Uh, we want to try and get you into a housing. Um, we've got a supply of some uh, $20 housings that'll work for snorkelers, provided that you're not free diving. So even though they're rated to 10 metres, there's microphones in there and there's certain other parts that uh, I'm a little bit concerned about. So we're going to talk about things like that. The other thing that Adam told me about that really excited me was that, um, did you pick up on a YouTube video that he published? And it was about, do you know when you pull footage of uh, underwater and it's green in color? Um, I've got to be honest with you, uh, you're not going to see a lot of green footage of mine. It's normally blue or I don't post it. So he's going to teach us how to, using special techniques that we can make the water look bluer, fresher, more appealing, okay? Um, the other questions that I've got on my mind, he spoke about uh, filters. And what I want to know is, uh, are we actually shoving a filter on the front or is it in the programming? And I'm, I'm pretty sure he said it was in the programming. Yeah. Um, and I, I, do... I, 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 I honestly, all that stuff was shot in auto white balance and then just using color correction filters in the apps. All right. You just confused me already. You're going to have to tell us again next week. <laughs> so, um, uh, how do I get. I'm not sure how to give you back the. Um... There's more to a career in. Oops. Yeah, how do I give you back the oh, control? Right, I've got to find you first. I'll sort it out. Right, there you are. No, I can't do it. Anyway, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to see you all next week. Does anybody have any questions? I think, uh, you know, we've probably got time for uh, a few questions. Any yeah, questions? Sure. Surely there must be some questions. I jump in there for a second? Yeah, pop in. 
Fantastic, Adam. Thank you very much for giving you uh, giving us uh, your time, mate. This is uh, this is great for all of us, I think, especially myself, who I've only just got a GoPro in the last couple of years and taking a long time to learn how to use it. So, just what you've spoken about tonight's been been a huge step forward for me. Um, that's for sure, um, mate. Just uh, I won't. I've got a stack of questions here, but yeah. just just one of the the major ones is. I'm really struggling when I take um, take photos with a GoPro. If I do it in camera mode, the photo is never as good as if I take a video and then take a snap out of it. Are you, is your imagery taken in that method or? I, because of the GoPro 10 and the 11, you can shoot in 5.3K. I just use that now and take frame grabs from it. I find it better, to be honest. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm finding yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, good, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, that's... that's uh, that's one of the many questions I'm sure uh, other people have more. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll wait to hear others as well. I've got a question. Could I please ask a quick, a quick one? Yes, yes go for it. Yeah. Uh, Adam, I'm so glad to see that you're wearing glasses because I wear glasses and, it's, <laughs> and, and, and I struggle to see the screen. Yeah. Any tips on how, you know, vision impairment can um, be okay with the GoPro? A hundred percent. Okay. So, my daughter, who's now over in, in um, Costa Rica, she's actually over there working with um, Sloth. She's doing a, um, a tenure over there just um, as a, as I guess, um, as a volunteer. Uh, but she used to work at Adreno. And um, you can actually get prescription lenses into your, um, into your, into your mask, which is what I use now. Uh, it's okay. made a huge difference. Okay. Yeah. Go, and, go and see Kelly. Wait, where do you get those? Okay. Where, where, where would you get those? So if you go into any Adreno store, uh, where are you, Gold Coast or Brisbane? Uh, Southport. Oh, oh, perfect, Southport. Go yeah, to, I know. Yeah, go, I've got, go to, uh, uh, do you know where Adreno is? Um, right yeah, next yeah, to, I've been in there a few go, times. Go and see Kelly in there. She'll look after you. Just tell her that Adam Bolt sent you. Yeah. Uh, or George, because she knows both of us. Um, yeah. And just say you want prescription lenses for your GoPro. First, before you go there, what, what you need to do is go to a um, optometrist get them to take your eye reading so that you can go in there and say, well, like you need a plus one or a plus two. Yeah, I've got all that. Uh, yeah. And then you go and take that to Kelly. She'll get them organized. I'll fit them. And it's made a huge difference. Like I never knew until I got that, that um, when I was um, scuba diving, that my dive watch actually showed me like um, my, my safety stop. I, I never knew that. I'm going, yes. oh, I, I can do a safety stop. <laughs> I had to do in the Mal. I learned. I did my advanced open water in the Maldives, and I um, didn't have my glasses on. And they asked me to be the leader for the, um, <laughs> you know, the leader for when you have to do your flipper. What is it when you have to do your distance? And they yeah. have to follow you, and you have yeah. to navigation. Yes. And yeah. I got so lost. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I struggled with that too. It was only when I went underwater because it magnifies that I could start reading the um, compass. Yeah, so yeah. Above, above, I was like. Arr. Yeah, uh, so yeah. definitely, definitely go get those. It'll make a huge difference. Thank you. So, Adam, I've got a question. Um, Gareth, where are you, mate? Just give us a wave. Yeah. Gotcha, mate. So how do guys like Gareth deal with going on a trip, a dive trip, taking hours and hours of footage, oh, promising, yeah. promising to post something? and <laughs> yeah. do it. What's the solution for that, Adam? Mate, <laughs> hours. Man, that took me a month to put that footage together. Yeah. Um, the... Honestly, it wasn't until last year when CapCut came out with um, their um, program for Windows. Uh, the beauty about CapCut is um, it's available on your Android, iPhone. Uh, it's also available on PC and Mac. And they also have a web-based one. So you, you could have the slowest computer in the world. And because it's all web-based, um, you can pretty much edit any of the GoPro video that you take. And it's such a simple program to, to use. Once you see a couple of the techniques, which we'll show in the very last um, episode, um, you're, you're looking and going, wow, this makes it so easy. And like we've gone out diving now, haven't we, George, where I've come back and the next morning I've put up, posted something with transitions, titles, song, all that sort of thing uh, in less than a day, like, you know, four or five hours. Um, it's so, so easy to use. And you'll it makes a big difference to, you taking all this video and actually really enjoying putting it together now to, to make something from it. Yeah, what you will need is, um, Susan, I think you've got a question, give me a sec. Um, 
data management. So you're going to need a hard drive, unfortunately. <laughs> um, if you might have that enough capacity on your computer, but you're going to need to be filing stuff uh, as it comes off your SD card. Otherwise, you're going to lose track of it. Um, Susan Hatch, far away. Thanks so much, George. Thanks, Adam, for a great presentation and for all the teaching you're about to do us for us in the next few weeks. Just a quick question about whether you're going to be, I didn't see it on your agenda, but are you going to be doing anything with dome ports and, and split shots? Yeah, with yeah. so that, that will be, uh, part of that will be equipment and then also in uh, the framing side of it as well, like um, you know, how, how you can get different looks by framing, as you, know, as you mentioned there, a dome or other techniques as well. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. I'll be able to share some tips on how to not scratch your domes and how to. Yes. Oh, my goodness. They scratch so easy. And how to move them around and all that stuff. So uh, we've got some first hand experience. Okay. There's time for more questions. Any more questions before we. Uh... I had a question, George. Far away. Um, thank you so much, Adam. That was wonderful. Um, I had a question. Have you used the. GoPro to do live stream to your socials? And if so, how successful or unsuccessful are you? Um, well, at the moment, I'm actually using the GoPro to act as a webcam. So um, I haven't done it with the live stream, but I've got a mate called Danny Black up in Brisbane who's used the GoPro plenty of times for that and no issues at all. Um, he does uh, almost monthly uh, a live stream to his members and he uses the GoPro and it's been, been fine. And okay, um, cool. Andy, I've got a media mod and um, yeah. it, it fits onto your camera. It's got a big microphone with a foam padding on it. And I use that for, you know, on land videos and that's perfectly set up so you can live stream and the microphone actually uh, takes sound from the front as opposed from behind. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to teach about with that as well, okay? For sure. Awesome, cool, yeah. thank you. All right, so don't forget, if you've got any specific questions on notice, put them on the chat group, please. And then Adam and I will make a list of them and make sure we address them as we go. And if you've got any questions in the meantime, uh, feel free to reach out to Adam or myself personally on our uh, on our messengers, okay? So okay. if there's nothing else, folks, Adam, did you have anything else to no, say? Look, I, I, my, my question is, because I, I, you know, I'm presenting, I don't really get to see what you guys are seeing. So much. So I just want to make sure. Did that did that work for you guys? Is that sort of like that yeah. way that's presented? It's fabulous. Excellent. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Fabulous. Adam. Really, really yeah. fabulous. Thank you, Brock, for sending us a little card there. I can see. Thank you. All right, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for investing your time, Adam. Thank you so much as well, and I look forward to seeing you folks Saturday, twenty seventh of May at the Seaway in person. If you're going to be around, okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Thank, Thank you. you, George. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hello, Adam. Where's Adam? Is Adam gone? He's gone. All right, everybody. Good evening. Thanks, George. That was really good. Cool. That was brilliant. That it was, was amazing, eh? Like, hey? Pretty inspirational. The guy did weep again tonight, hey? Eh? Yeah, well, I felt it. Yeah, we felt the passion. It was Imagine awesome. being surrounded by orangutans. You know what his daughter's doing? She's doing research on sloths. Yeah? Mm. Amazing. All right, folks. Good evening, and we'll talk soon, eh? Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. folks. Bye-bye.